Hey guys, welcome to the 10th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework for Python. And in this one we're going to be talking about another feature that's built into the Django Web Framework called the Django Admin. So let's just get straight in and I'm going to show you what the Django Admin is. So in the last video we talked a bit about the login system and we created that initial user. So I can now log in with this basic login form. So I've got the development server running and I'm just going to log in just to show you what we have from the last video. So I went to account, forward slash account, forward slash login, and we made this login page. And then when we press login, we just get to a home page, and then that's it. So what we can also do is we could go to forward slash admin, and I logged in using the current login page that we, that we made ourselves, which means that's fully functional now. But what we could do is use the Django one as well. So if you haven't logged in using forward slash account forward slash login or if you haven't made that page yet in your particular project you can right from the start when you start your Django project you can actually go to forward slash admin which is the default URL that's all set up for you and you can get straight through to this page which is pre-built by the Django web framework for you to use and because we created that super user you can use that user to log in with this form as well so it's the exact same credentials I can use in this form and that also logs me in. So what what we see here when we get to this page is all the database tables that we have access to. Now right now we've only got the default ones for groups and users but if you wanted to create your own database to store your data in or your database table um, that's going to have a model or a structure in other words so what fields it's going to have which is the sort of information so it might have a username and a password and an email address in the case of this user's model, but you can create your own ones as well. So you can have a blog post and blog title and blog content and uh, the date of its post and stuff like that as well. So you can create a model for any sort of data that you want to be able to store in Django. So let's just go and look into this user model just to show you sort of what that looks like. Now, in, on this page, we get the sort of data that's with that's contained inside that model. And it's really good, I think, that it's all built out for you already because this user interface is quite complicated and it would take us a long time to build out ourselves if we needed to. So it's really, really good that Django just has that built in and for us to use and you can search through everything and you can do various actions and it's really, really powerful. And what this is really, really good at and it's really good at one particular thing, which is just managing your database. So you can manage and change all the data within here, and you can even set up other users so they have particular permissions using groups, which I sort of talked about a bit in more of it in other videos. Is that you can give people access based on what they need to to be able to allow them to change your data but only in restricted ways which is good because you don't want to give everyone full access to your database because they might delete things that you want you don't want deleted or you know change things that you don't want changed and that sort of thing so that's why groups is really useful but if you just look at default users so this is this is the user that I created when I did Django admin create super user and you can see that it's got the super user status uh, which is automatically created when we do that when we do that create super user command and I also have staff, state, staff status and active as well if I disable this active checkbox that just means that the user is still going to be there but I can't log into the account now it also has some optional fields for first last name and email address and the username and password which are mandatory fields in this particular model and the way that Django stores passwords is actually really really good because what it means is that instead of just having one simple hash and then that hashing every single password using that single hashing algorithm if that were the case then if, if, a, if a hacker with your database was able to crack one password then they'd have figured out the hash and they could use it to earn hash all the passwords pretty much instantaneously. So that's a very, very insecure way of storing passwords, even though it's slightly better than storing just the plain text, because that's obviously the worst thing you can do. But then Django takes it a step further and it says, well, instead of using the same hashing algorithm, I'm going to use what's called salts to be able to sort of use different hashing algorithms. And it's going to create the passwords in a logical way, which it still 
is able to use to authenticate users, but it's much more secure and it's going to take hackers a lot longer to decipher each password rather than trying to figure out one algorithm and then being able to unlock all the passwords in that database once they've figured out that one algorithm because each password is stored in a different way. Does that make sense? So that's a really, really powerful thing that Django's just got built in. Now I should point out that it's by no means completely secure because really no website is completely secure. There's always going to be some sort of way that some people can hack into your website given enough time and effort. Um, but that's the case with every single website. So Django gets you off to a really, really good start with the security of your website, especially for a lot of smaller sites. You know, any more security of that, I would argue, is probably not really necessary. So that's what we've got in the default Django user model, which is really, really useful. And it's defined all these fields for us. And you can see groups is where you can change the different permissions if you don't want you know, a staff member having access to your entire database, then you can just limit certain things. And that can be useful if you're using the admin, you know, so that they can have their own login and they can change things, but, you know, on a more restricted basis. Uh, and also user permissions is sort of a similar sort of thing. And telling them what they can and can't do. And there's also dates, so it just says, okay, when was this user created? When was when when did it join the the system and that sort of thing so that's the default one but this is really cool because it allows you to say okay well i can input data here and i can save that and that's going to be stored in the database and that's really cool because it means you can store that data in the database really really easily you don't have to do any sort of sql or anything like that like you might have had to in if you're writing with other programming languages i know you know, if you use PHP or something like that, you'll have to write MySQL, or you'll have to write SQL, the language, to be able to write queries to the database and stuff like that. And I just think that's the worst way of doing it. I think the Django models is a much more powerful way to be able to make sort of much safer commands towards your database and interact with it in a much safer way than than the raw SQL. And there's lots of other benefits as well, but. That's just a few things that I think is really, really powerful about using the Django Web Framework and, you know, the admin page to manage those models. So in the next video, we're going to create a specific user profile and that's going to contain information that is relevant to the user once they've logged in. So it's not going to be the same page presented to each user. It's going to be specific to whatever their data is related to that user in the database. And for that, we'll need to create our own custom model and do some stuff to be able to extend that default user profile.